This is Off Planet Radio. Go. Hey, all right. Hey, guys, welcome back to another episode of Off Planet Radio, offplanetradio.com, and uh, patreon.com backslash offplanetmedia. Thank you for all our supporters. Welcome back. And we have a great show for you tonight. Um, our good friend, it's been a long time since he's been here, Chris Kaler is with us tonight. And uh, he's going to um, chat with us about the energetics that's going on in the universe right now, what he's finding in his healing, what people need to be thinking about and kind of focusing on and working on within themselves. And uh, then um, we're going to get into doing some healings. And um, we're really excited to be offering one, uh, one of our first um, kind of gifts to our patrons uh, tonight. We, so we have some patrons uh, who got the opportunity to get this healings today. And so if you would like to uh, join us over on Patreon, you'll be eligible for such gifts in the future. Yeah, see, this is what happens when you get in on the inside and you support this. Uh, you get invitations the general public doesn't get. How cool is that? Yeah. So here we go. Hey, Chris. Randy, how are you, my friend? Yeah, I, I you know, sorry, we had trouble hooking up here at the beginning due to a technical glitch. I, I never have trouble hooking up. <laughs> I know you don't. You're the cosmic hookup guy. I was going to introduce you as the, uh, what, the cosmic shaman, the man who's cleaning out the Pleiades and making it safe for intergalactic travel once more. Take the play in the Pleiades. That's it. <laughs> All right, man. So what's going on in, in the multiverse out there? There, that you, uh... there, is, there is so many things happening, uh, and it's happening at basically breakneck speeds. Yep. The, the work that I do, if nobody has been following, is, is, of course, doing healing work on anybody with health problems. And basically, anybody who has a health problem that's very chronic, doesn't have, seem to have an answer or a rhyme or a reason, there's always going to be some kind of energetic uh, problem that, that is, is alongside of it within uh, our etheric selves, our, our uh, energy bodies, etc. And it all has to do, number one, with reptilians. And you're, you're going to hear me say reptilians about 55,000 times tonight. And also to do with ascension. Now, if anybody who is a spiritualist, anybody who does follow a lot of the, the, the talks that a lot of spiritual-minded uh, gurus and those types of people have to say on the Internet, there is talk about ascension. And we are uh, literally entering that that whole scenario as we speak we're heading into the the winter solstice on on the 20th 21st and that is is an activation date for a lot of things to happen so um the the, the newest things that have been going on is is that i'm finding that that people are are transitioning into what is called their silica cell now, one of the, the concepts about this whole process of ascension is that humanity is going to become a crystalline, a crystalline uh, body. So, so instead of being carbon-based, we're going to be crystal-based. Okay, that's one of the things that's been talked about. Also, the, the concept of multi-strand DNA, which really doesn't have a lot of validity to it. Uh, we're, we're going to stay two-strand for a little while, at least as far as I know, and just use up the rest of that hard drive that's, that's sitting dormant. So, so that's, you know, that concept. But the, the big concept is this transition from, a, from, from our carbon base into this, we, we call it the silica cell. I've been told very specifically it's called a silica cell. Silica being uh, a quartz, quartz sand, so, so it is a crystal. Now, a lot of people are finding that they're having tr uh, trouble transitioning because these darn reptilians, these scaly butt reptilians, are holding us back. Okay, because ultimately, if we transition into this higher dimension, we are no longer a food source or a source of entertainment, a source of slavery or whatsoever to these reptilian species. Okay, so, so that, that is the big thing that's happening right here and right now. Uh, we've made a lot of different discoveries uh, along the way in the last even just a couple of weeks have been huge. 
And one of the bigger ones is, is, uh, um, is something, it's, it's a protection. And a lot of people, well, the biggest thing I get asked is how can I protect myself against these reptilians, against these ET, the gray aliens, and et cetera. And, of course, you know, you, you try to give the best advice you can, stay grounded, stay alert, stay neutral, don't let anything rattle you, uh, keep any, any kind of fear out of your fields so you don't want to be walking in fear because these types of beings love fear. Okay, but what the biggest thing that I found is, is that there is something uh, called a firmament. Now, the firmament, the word firmament, um, the way I, I stumbled upon this is, of course, when I got some downtime, I'm, I'm scanning around on YouTube looking for information, looking for things to spark some kind of idea of where I can go to help people at a much deeper level. Something always sparks a thought. And what, what I saw was uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, rocketeers, so some uh, amateur rocketeers shooting off a huge rocket, one of the biggest rockets that, that you can make uh, without having a, a NASA license into the atmosphere. And they had a GoPro rocket on this thing. And uh, they, they shot it in the air and it's going, 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 all of a sudden, bink, it stops. Two times they did this. So, of course, this video is going viral on, on YouTube, and I'm thinking, dome around the earth, possibility. So I start Googling dome around the earth. What do I find? The word firmament. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's mentioned in the Bible, firmament. God placed a firmament between the waters above and the waters below. So I start thinking, of course, the way my mind works is when you find something of that nature, try and apply it. To, to the human body and see if there's any kind of relevance to it. So, of course, I start looking for firmaments with, within our self, our energy, our brain, whatever, and I start finding them, and I find that there's a lot of holes in the firmament. A lot of firmaments are missing. Some firmaments are actually reptilian, so they have the key to, to get into your firmament, to get inside and, and uh, harass your, your, your body. So, that has been very huge. Uh, work, working there and in reinstalling these firmaments, creating new ones and, and cleaning up that area. And that, that has been opening the doors to a lot of other things. I'm finding a lot of people with radioactive isotopes within their body, strontium, uranium, plutonium. A lot of this is coming from Japan. A lot of it's coming from the chemtrails. A lot of it's coming from a lot of different places. It could also be uh, in, in the form of a spell, of an intent uh, from these reptilians in order to, to slow us down, to, to keep us, hold us back from this ascension process. Uh, I just worked on somebody today, and I worked on this person a few times, and we would, you know, clear some energies, and they'd feel a whole lot better. Oh, okay, it's gone. It's feeling great. Three days later, it's back. And then we do another clearing, they feel better. A week later, it's back. And we did back and forth like this about four or five times. And today we, we found that, that uh, this person was trying to transition into the seventh dimension in, in the form of, of the silica cell, but she was being held back. And a lot of the, the components of chemtrails were uh, a, a contributor to holding this person back and within their brain, within the brain stem, et cetera. So, so by um, taking that, that information and applying it to remove whatever is holding this person back, reptilians, isotopes, uh, um, MRSA bacteria, all this stuff that's designed to hold her back, all of a sudden things are a lot better. So it starts to resonate and make a lot more sense as to what is really going on within humanity, what is keeping us uh, at bay, what is keeping us down. A lot of people feel um, very, very held down, very depressed, very, very much like I can't move any, I can't go forward, I, I feel like there's something holding me down. And that's what it is, is these darn reptilians doing what they can do to stop us from going into this new dimension, gaining new consciousness, new, law, new uh, uh, knowledge, basically creating a new species. Okay, right now we are all basically hybrids. We are reptilians. This body is a reptilian body, has a lot of reptilian DNA, genomes, programs, etc. And the whole concept is to separate from that. The, a lot of people talk about living in duality. The duality is human 
and reptilian. That, that's the, that's the true uh, uh, duality. Uh, you know, everybody talks about duality, right and wrong, up and down, left and right, yes and no, uh, hair, no hair, I mean, whatever. Duality is, the duality is human and reptilian. And, and that's basically where we are right now. And uh, for a lot of people who are very sick, you have a chronic heart issue that doesn't want to uh, have any kind of, of, of relief. You get that reptilian DNA out of it, replace it with human, energetically, you make the intent, and the same with any part of the body. You, you clear out that reptilian DNA and, and intend human DNA to, to activate. All of a sudden, people do feel better. So, so more and more, all the time, we're getting this, these confirmations that the concept of us being here is to ascend and the concept of the reptilians is to hold us back so that we can be used as their food source, as their entertainment and slavery source. So it's just every day, it's more and more confirmed about exactly what's going on with them. That's wonderful people. So can I ask you a question? Because to be honest, sometimes I struggle with this whole idea of ascension. It's become a, bear, a, a very overused term in like new age kinds of groups and a very love and lighty kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of times that doesn't resonate with me. Could it also be looked at as we're, we, we, we were once in the state that you're talking about that, we're, that, that humans are supposed to be in, and we have somehow fallen, or we somehow have been brought down to this level to be used as a food source, to be used as slaves and whatever. And because of people's consciousness about so many things, people becoming aware of all this stuff, we are now actually returning, becoming again once what we've always been, but we have been degraded. You know what I mean? Is it more, could, could this possibly be more of a return to what we should be or what we you, at one time were as opposed to ascending to something different well if, if you look back in, in time to different civilizations the mayans the atlanteans all, all of those civilizations that were that seemed to be very very high in consciousness right yes it would be yes we're, we're returning back to that 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 time uh it could be dimension universe whatever finding that that uh, uh, uh part of us that that has been taken out Okay, some people call it the, the God gene or the uh, what, whatever. But, but yes, there, there is definitely a, a time when there was very high consciousness. And, and I, I believe that is before the reptilians. And, of course, where did all these civilizations go? Where did the Mayans, Egyptians, where did they all go? Right. It, it doesn't seem to be, it seems to stop at a certain point of time where nobody's carrying that information or that knowledge anymore. So, so yes, very much so it, it can be. A lot of the clearings I do within people, we, we're, I'm told to bring them back to their first creation. Yeah, you've created, that before, yeah. First creation of source. Yeah. Which, which in, instead of first creation of, of soul, now the word soul uh, does have some reptilian connotation to it. So I use the word source. It's a much truer form of, of that energy. So when you intend that your first creation is from source, then it butterflies effects and, and it, it starts to create a, a better scenario. Okay. And then the other question I had was you were talking about us becoming our silica self or us becoming crystalline. Can you differentiate that from, okay, because one, one of the fears people have or one of the things that we see that is, you know, we're talking a lot about um, artificial intelligence and transhumanism and a lot of the things that people experience with uh, Morgellons and finding nanotechnology in their bodies seem to be some things that would, you would resemble what you would find in a crystal radio kit or some kinds of silicone. I mean, I've found these things in my body before. How is what you're talking about different than that? Because I'm, I'm assuming what you're talking about is different than that, obviously. It, 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 it certainly is. And it's yeah. basically uh, our, our, our structure is a pure crystal. It's, it's nothing of, of a, an, I, an AI or, or anything right. implanted like right. that. It's I, I, I understand that. I understand that. I just wanted you to sort of explain for the listeners who may have concerns hearing some of those terms what the difference is. Yeah, it, it is a more pure form. It, it's, it's basically getting, getting back to source, getting into a, a body that resonates and as, as, as a body that is able to resonate higher. That is for a body that can resonate, vi vibrate at the frequency that it is meant to vibrate at. Correct. So my question is, do you think that some of these things that, that's like some of these uh, nanotechnologies and sil silicone kinds of things that are in people's bodies from chemtrails and Morgellons, are them trying to create a false version of what you're talking about that is a natural version? It, it, it absolutely is. A false is. version that they can control? 
And that, that's exactly what it is. It's a version to distract us. Okay, what's going on? Now, now my, my thoughts are taken off from, from, from going in, into a higher consciousness. Now I'm, now I'm distracted and be a distraction will definitely lower your vibration to that point where you know, you're stagnant. you you got so many things going on, health problems, family problems, money problems, job problems, hair problems, whatever. And, and that, <laughs> you're really focused on that one today. <laughs> I like myself. How can I say? It, it really distracts you and brings you down to that low, low vibration where, where that energy, they're, they're loose, that energy they feed off of can be easily a pain. Absolutely. Randy? Yeah, I, I'm curious to know if you've heard, um, there's a video that was released by John Lamb Lash where he's talking about the singularity. And he's basically saying that we are Okay, so the idea of the singularity is this whole merger into the silicon, the computer chip, the AI world. And what Lash is saying is that there's actually a parallel singularity that's occurring on a spiritual harmonic as well. And the terminology's, you know, it's kind of loose. It kind of rifts through a lot of concepts. What do you see in terms of human versus machine interface well one uh thing i do find is, is that uh, a lot of people are under uh, a, a sound weapon attack and look at what's happening in cuba to, to all those people who got uh, hit by sound weapons they're even talking about it on the news that these these people these americans um uh, yeah. uh, I forget, I forget exactly diplomats. american diplomats got yeah, yeah, the yeah. weaponry yeah yeah, and they got hit. Now, now of course, the the uh, video screens, the, the our our cell phones, you know, everything like that, uh, they are capable of transmitting these sound frequencies. So, so uh, the AI is is all right here. Okay, they're going to control us through these things. Okay, I, I patch mine up. I've got patches everywhere to block all these signals. But you know, if you look at at people who all of a sudden oh, I must get a gun and go shoot as many people as I can. They're getting a phone call, say the word blue, and all of a sudden they're going out and, and then shooting people. So there's a lot of control through the, the, the artificial intelligence in front of us, but the computers, I mean, look at, look at how quick the, the technology came about. I mean, I was, you know, 20 years old, and they just invented the CD for crying out loud, and now, now everything is, is our telephones and everything is our computers. Yeah. So this is some of the stuff that you and I were talking about last time at a session with some of the sound and light weaponry and how some of the things that are being disguised as entertainment can also have this other effect on us. And we, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't enjoy the entertainment, but we have to keep our level of awareness high and really sort of protect ourselves before we go into these situations where we may be exposed to some of this. Yeah. And, and uh, obviously it is being grounded. Okay. That, and that's a big thing is most, a lot of people aren't grounded. You think you are, but you're not. For a lot of people, their, their south pole of, of the polarity can be completely whacked and, and, and out to lunch and, and somewhere else. So you're, you can never be grounded. If you're not grounded, that's when these things are going to hit you. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to – I just completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> Speaking of the sound and light frequency weapons, um, what, what do you think, though, about this whole – because things have reached – Certainly, like in some of the, in our community and on the internet in general out there, this fever pitch about like AI and how it relate it, is it connected with cryptocurrencies and, and is, you know, is this sort of, um, is, is some kind of situation like we're approaching with everything being folded into sort of a singularity, the kind of thing that brought down Atlantis, the kind of thing that brought down Lemuria, like how, how in, in your work, how significant is this transition people are going through with the AI and cryptocurrencies? And, and how, you know, is it something that, that, you know, how hard do we need to fight this or is it inevitable? What are you finding in your work? Um, okay, the, the AI itself, okay, so, so if you, you know, comb the internet like a lot of people do, you're going to hear stuff like black goo consciousness. I really don't find a lot of it unless it hasn't come my way yet. There's, there's a lot of things, I think, on the internet that are distraction, that, that are not real, just things to lead us astray from seeing the big picture. Okay, I, I think there's a lot of that going on. Of course, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true, right? 
Of course. So, so I, I think I think we have to be aware of what is distraction, what isn't. Um, a lot of things are just reptilian traps. Uh, our our chakra system, the different areas of the aura that we've all believed in, the kundalini, all this stuff, it's all just fake. It doesn't exist. Um, it, it's, it's things well, things that I don't work with anymore, okay? And yeah. I just find that, that there's no validity to them anymore because in a lot of ways they are a distraction. So you're saying that's what this whole AI kind of thing is as well? It's a, it's a distraction from... I, I think I think it is that there is a, uh, you know everything is distraction. Right, I agree. You know, it's it's you know it's just everywhere distraction, distraction, distraction. And uh, you know when I find I start to get distracted on a few different things, I ground, I, I look forward, and I and I say, look, I need to concentrate on what I'm doing here. Never mind whatever's coming in to the left or to the right. Yeah. I just I just keep grounded and I, I keep myself to a point where distraction I might bug me for a second and then I go forward and I just keep on going all right so another thing that I've, that I've been noticing and talk talking about in the background with some other people lately is the level of spraying has been ramped up to like really really high levels um, I can't like in Los Angeles here it's been absolutely crazy and especially like you would think with all the fires going on that they might take a day off from the spraying no -uh, no nope. um, so the chemtrails have been heavy. There's been all these fires going on, which there's been some very strange things about the fires, both in Northern California and here in Los Angeles. Strange on such so many levels that we can't go into it here and now. But what do you what do you kind of think about that? Since that's sort of been a hot topic of discussion, but also we I think we all recognize there's something funny going on with all of this stuff. Well, uh, you know, of course, chemtrailing has is, is always been a hot topic. And on my radio show, we, we've talked about it to great lengths with a lot of people in the know. Um, and, you know, the, the big thing is, okay, so they are spraying. There's no doubt about that. Just like 9-11 was an inside job. There's no doubt about right. that. So, right. so, so they are spraying something. It's not jet condensation. Right. They're actually spraying something, but the big thing is, what are they spraying? So a lot of people have gone as far as doing uh, uh, hair analysis to, to, to see for chemicals, right. and they'll find barium and uh, this and that, and different things within there. Um, I do find that in some cases, I, I think it's going to be different for the for the area. Mm -hmm. okay, there's going to be different uh, uh, things that they're spraying. Uh, I've been finding a lot of radioactivity within people lately. Isotopes, uranium, strontium, these types of things. Mm -hmm. And these types of things are designed to hold you back from going forward into this, this new right. consciousness. So do you, do you think the reason that it's ramping up so much is because people are waking up so quickly right now that they just have to keep, like they have to just throw everything at the wall? I mean, the spraying here, I've never seen anything like what the spraying has been for the last two months yeah. or so. It's well, out of control. There, there is, a, a, let's say, a time frame for all this stuff to start happening, all, all this new consciousness, all this awakening, uh, there is a bit of a time frame to it, and it, it all comes down to alignments. That the solstices mm -hmm. are an activator, uh, super moons, full moons, eclipses. Look how many eclipses we've had in 2017. I think it's an unparamounted amount of eclipses we've had. Those are all different activation so we are into a time frame if you look at uh, astrological signs we're, we're into aquarius the water bearer the, the divine feminine there's a lot of things that are activating and connecting and and creating this energy to, to go forward through it so of course now all, if there's ramped up spraying if there's ramped up different types of things to, to lower your vibration that's why it is because that time is upon us yeah do you have any insight on, uh, just out of curiosity, anything about these fires? You know, there's a lot of people speaking out there about, about these are definitely not natural, that these are sort of created by directed energy weapons. Has anything about this come up in any of your work? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little story. Now, there's somebody I know, I'm not going to use this person's name, just, just because we don't want to get them involved uh, with anybody trying to take them down. Uh, this person was sleeping in their, their apartment in L.A., all of a sudden, uh, this person is sleeping on a, an air mattress. All of a sudden, the air mattress at 2 in the morning goes pop. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, this person has a, a, a very sore spot on their back. This person looks in the mirror and sees a, a dinner-sized plate burn on, on their back. Yep. And I, 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 uh, this person sent me the picture, and I saw it, and I went, oh, my goodness, this stuff is real. 
okay? Stuff is getting real. And uh, there's no way that this person could have obtained this, this type of burn. And the way the burn was, you can see the skin cells yeah. outlined, okay? So, so that tells me there are underground weapons. I did work with somebody, and we found that under the Getty, the Getty Museum, yep. Yeah. There's a lot of tunnels. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. No. No doubt. There's a lot of of reptilian energy weapons within those tunnels, and yes. they're they're coming up. They're coming down. They're coming from satellites. They want to burn out California. Yeah, I would say um, that. So I'm in Los Angeles here, and I'm sort of at a midpoint between a lot of these fires. But every area that has been hit, it sits over. I would I would say sits over some kind of base or near some sort of you know a weaponry kind of. Uh, you know, um, military industrial complex kind of thing or over a base, there's definitely an enormous base under the Getty Museum. That's that it, people think it's just here at the Getty near Skirball, but it's actually connects all the way to the Getty at Pacific Coast Highway. That whole mountain, which is the mountain that has basically been on fire over there, underneath mm -hmm. that is a base. Um, and, uh, you know, the same thing that has been happening with some of the fires here that happened up in Northern California, where people would experience basically a power outage before the fires. Mm -hmm. So there, there was some kind of like EMP or some kind of uh, energy weapon that was sort of put off that created a power outage. And then shortly after that, the fa fires came. And again, apparently some people are seeing uh, laser light kinds of things in the sky before the fires start. And then unusual fire patterns and where, you know, I saw this one picture where everything was burnt. Cars were burnt, houses were burnt, but the plastic um, garbage and recycling bins from the even, city. Even trees aren't getting burnt. They didn't, and, and plastic garbage ba garbage cans and recycling bins that belong to the city, they're not burning, trees aren't burning. I saw one picture of a football field that had um, one side of the field was perfectly green and the other side was torched and it was a perfectly straight line. So it was almost like there was boundaries to the weapons and it only hit within a certain wow. kind of thing. All you gotta do is consider this. Consider if they, if they can uh, do 9-11, this, right. is, this is a party time for them. Same, same weaponry, same yeah. kind of weaponry. It, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all tr designed to create fear. To, to uh, for some reason, they, they want California gone. Uh, maybe it's, I mean, look at the, the big hurricanes that went through and, and uh, obliterated uh, all, all, the, all the islands and, and Texas and, and Florida. You know, they're all created. I mean, yeah. there has to be. There's no way why this stuff, this stuff is just, you know, Mother Nature, you know, sneezing and farting and causing these things to happen. The things that the governments can do, the technology they've been given is, is unreal. We should all be, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say the word afraid, but the, the stuff that can happen is huge. Yeah. Randy, what say you about some of this? He says preaching oh, to the choir. No, I'm just uh, kind of flowing with what, what Chris is saying right now. Yeah. Um, maybe just to kind of go to a slight, slightly different, I'm curious to know what you're finding right now in terms of etheric implants. Because well, I have a sense that that's, that's on the rise. Um, now, now, the word implant does get a little overused as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, I've seen some videos where Ron Arm, a guy named Ron Ar Armatron will sit there and just pull implants out of people. And, and I say, don't do that because if there is one, you've got to pull it out at the right time. Otherwise, you cut the wrong wire and something goes wrong. Uh, I do find uh, we call it more of an imprint. Uh, let's say somebody has a kidney disease. It could be an imprint within that kidney to cause... The, the, the dysfunction, um, but one of the, the, the bigger, I'm going to call it an implant uh, as of late, is if you ever seen a, a sci-fi movie where they take a big probe and they stick it in the back of somebody's neck, okay, the program, I've been pulling those out of people like crazy. You've pulled, I, you've pulled it out of me, and I, I, I mean, I have a very unusual thing on the back of my neck, and we've actually seen that in a lot of media, we've seen that in Fringe. We've seen that in a lot of, you know what I mean. That's, I think that's, I think it's. They show us it because it's real. They, you know, what I mean? they show us after they've been doing it for a really long time, and people will think it's fake because they saw it on the TV or the movies or whatever. But no, for sure, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so that that is a big one. It and it, it does disconnect you from from the whole 
concept of, of these 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 beings okay so uh one a bit of information i do get is that there is a supercomputer on saturn where there were a lot of things are controlled there's a a base within the moon there's a base at, at uh, antarctica i mean there's, there's so many places where these things are that that are uh, uh you know watching over humanity or or us hybrids whatever you want to call us and then there is energetic connections that, that, that can actually just flick a switch and make you sick and, and take your life. Next round, um, let's go back to Eclipse for a minute and what transpired in the August Eclipse that hit the United States. Um, a lot of us, I watched the Eclipse, I watched it in my car with a, a gray shield screen that's on my sunroof and I was videoing it, photographing it while I was watching it with a pair of Ray-Bans on. The camera and my eyes did not agree on what I saw in the sun that day. So give us your take on what you think was going on with that eclipse because I'm fairly, cons I'm fairly convinced at this point that was not an eclipse, but that was some kind of flyover of some. Um, sure. I, I mean, in this day and age right now with all the conspiracy, you, you almost have to think that anything is possible. For me, the, the eclipse was an activation. Okay. It was one of these things that happened that, that activated an energy to, to move to, to, to a cog to turn within the wheel. Now, um, there also has been a lot of talk about the sun is not our real sun. It's a holographic sun. Right, right. Okay. And I was getting a lot of information about that. I remember uh, one, one day I was sitting in my office and, uh, you know, having a meditation. Most people call it a nap. I call it a meditation. And all of a sudden, you know, I was kind of half asleep, half awake. And in my third eye, my, my mind's eye, I saw something like this happen. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I thought, okay, if this thing keeps going, I'm going into vertigo, and I don't want to go there again. That happened, and I don't want to go there. But it just went 180. And I, I opened my eyes and said, something just flipped. A pole flip just happened. Grabbed my charts. I asked, and it was a pole flip on the sun, which means that, that the polarity on the sun changed. Everything is polarity. Just remember that. Everything is polarity. So, so I, I looked into it, and sure enough, what that did is it changed the polarity of the corona of the sun, which in turn uh, changed the polarity of instead of a species coming in, species now go out. Okay, the, the door changed. Okay, that, that created that scenario. Now, did, did uh, the sun have to be blocked out in order for that sun to change from, from, from one to another? Possibly. I mean, there's, there's a ton of different scenarios that, that could be uh, um, looked into to, to know exactly what happened. Uh, they're talking about three days of darkness uh, in, in December this, this year. And, and I mean, there's a lot of different. Yeah, but they've been talking about they, three days yeah. of darkness forever. forever. I mean, even NASA was playing that game for a while. Yeah, but, but what, I, what I'm trying to say is, is, is that there's so many different things you can think into it. I mean, okay. Flat Earth, so many different things you can think into it. The sun, is it a real sun? If you go out of our atmosphere, can you really see a sun? Or can you really see stars that are really there? Uh, I mean, there's so many different... Can you go out of our atmosphere? <laughs> right? well, what, it, what it really says is we really still haven't settled a whole lot on exactly what it is we live on or live in. And the shape and construction of this thing around us. I mean, you talked earlier about the firmament and what the firmament is. The waters above between, the firmament sitting between the waters above and the waters below. Mm -hmm. Now, on Off Planet Radio, we believe that space is accessed through water portals and that basically what people consider to be space isn't space at all and that really any space programs have to deal with going through the water barrier which is hydrogen oxygen doesn't necessarily have to be a pool of water it's a presence of hydrogen yeah. and oxygen right yeah yeah so 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 that that definitely it resonates okay Let, let's say, let's put it that way it does resonate um i mean if you look at stargates 
portals to go to different dimensions and whatnot. And there could definitely be a, a mechanism of, of that sort. But, you know, the, the whole thing with, with the, the eclipse and, and why it happened and how it happened, you know, holograms are, are you know, so incredibly real nowadays. There's so many different uh, uh, possibilities. I mean, ultimately, what, what, what I needed to know, I got out of it. So, so all the other conspiracy stuff, I just left it behind. And, hey, you know what? works for me. What, what See, about- I don't do conspiracies, though. I, that's what I formulated out of my own mm-hmm. observation and my own sense of what was going on. I, I know there are other people that have echoed that there are varying narratives on this. And really, I, you know, I wanted to know what you got out of it in terms of, was this an event that demarcated a significant shift relative to what we were talking about earlier, which is this whole ascension thing? It, 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 and again, yes, it certainly was. Uh, just, just like a full moon, a super moon. Every type of, of uh, there's certain astrological alignments within planets. The, the Grand Cross happened, uh, you know, planet in each corner. Um, uh, Jupiter within Leo. All these different things uh, uh, do, do mean something um, uh, on a very, very deep level. Um, uh, all of a sudden, uh, be coming in, into the house of Aquarius is, is, is a big deal. Uh, the changing, I mean, we're talking about 2,600 years in between. Going there you go, back. right there. There's water yeah. again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so there, there is relevance in, in different ways. And, and, of course, different people who practice different belief systems look at things differently. Whereas I look at, is, is, is this going to help a person's health problem if I get them out of this situation with this, the, these, these changes? So what about this whole thing that's been going on with like, you know, lots of people are finding that they have um, vitamin D uh, deficiencies and all of this, you know, a lot of talk about um, the, the chemtrailing really be to, being to block the sun. And the kind of chemtrailing we've been seeing lately has really been like that. It's been a different kind where it really just does create this whole like shield. And you can almost see that there's blue sky beyond it, but that's being blocked. And I know from my, my own experience, I run outside several times a week and the sun, it, like, I'm not getting any color from the sun like I, I was getting actually before the eclipse, right? Since the eclipse, I'm not getting color from the sun really anymore. And I'm out there for, you know, probably 10 hours a week in the sun. If you listen to anybody who's into uh, general health, um, natural path doctors and so forth, you know, one will tell you everybody's magnesium deficient. The other one will tell you everybody's vitamin D deficient. One another one will tell you you have to be taking potassium iodine uh, and and so forth. That And then, you know, I start thinking, wow, we all must be dead because we're all deficient in everything, <laughs> like everybody says. I, th- I think deficiency is, is your, your body can create everything it needs within it. Okay, the, the enzymes, the, the vitamins, the minerals are, it, it, your body is That capable. is a statement I totally agree with. Yes, your body is capable yeah. of doing all this because there are people who live on nothing. Just drink water. Yeah. Look, look at a horse. What does a horse eat? A horse eats grass. Look how big the thing is. Yeah. Okay. So your DNA is capable of sustaining yourself. Interesting. It, it's, it's when, it's when there, there's interaction with that DNA from these other species causing a gene to shut down to stop making vitamin D, causing right. a gene to shut down to stop That's making right. magnesium. That's when the problem happens. Why are yeah. you magnesium deficient? Okay, it's because of something wanting you to be. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I get that. I, I mean, I get that. I think, but do you think that some of, some of it has to do with the blockage of the sun? Why people, or, or that's I, why I, people... Don't, I don't think so. I mean, okay. of course, you know. Uh, I get what uh, you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying. But it seems to be like, I have a friend whose partner recently, like, like was not feeling well and went to the doctor. And the doctor said they had, he had absolutely no vitamin D in him whatsoever at all. And it couldn't, he'd never seen anybody with that complete lack of it before. And he started, you know, he changed his diet and started taking some vitamin D supplements and he's feeling like a, a sure. million times better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, but why was he vitamin D deficient? Right. Well, he goes, he go, he, uh, what was crazy about it is his job is outside. So he's out in the sun all day, every day. And somehow yeah. he was still vitamin well, D deficient. So yeah. My, yeah. my office now, I'm in my basement here in my band room. I, I moved from, from my clinic in, into my, my house because I don't need an office anymore. 
and I've got a window the size of a wallet sitting over here, so I, I don't see a lot of sun either. I feel just fine. Yeah. Alrighty, right. So should we uh, move on to the healing section? Of let's, the show? Uh, let's have a look at some stuff, shall we? Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. so let's go first. So um, our first person today our first, it will be Valerie. Valerie, welcome to Off Planet Radio. You're on with Chris Kaler. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Okay, now, now Valerie and I talked a little bit, Valerie and Krisha and I, we all talked a little bit before you guys came on, and I got a bit of a lowdown on what, what they're experiencing. So, so uh, Valerie, why don't you explain to everyone exactly what we talked about? Um, yes, I'm, um, I'm an Irish teacher living in Mexico City, and I'm working at a private school that's, it's a very corporate school, and... I'm finding the energy there is very negative. And, you know, I start off my day well, I, I try to be positive, and as soon as I get into school, I just find that everything starts to affect me, everybody around me, and I sort of get into personalities, and criticizing people, and uh, just feeling very low. Um, the morale of school at the moment is very low. Um, there's a lot of people who want to leave there. And it's not generally, I'm quite a positive person. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's just the whole vibe of the place is very negative. And it's really affecting me at the moment that I get kind of obsessive thoughts about people and criticism and feeling very negative about everything and everybody there, even though I present quite a calm, uh, centered, you know, person. Inwardly, I'm like um, despising the place. But as soon as I leave there and go out and just listen to anything positive at all, um, I, you know, I change that around. So it's just to reclaim that balance that I want in my life again, because it's, it's dragging me down a lot at the moment. And a lot of people are feeling this. So it's like I'm a sponge and I'm listening to everybody else talk around me and they're saying fix me and I'm incorporating all their kind of, their criticism and negativity of place. And <coughs> so, so, so what, what I just dialed, I did a quick look on my letter chart. And what it spelled out is, is that within and around the school itself, like it's, it's not a problem so much within you it's more so an energy within the school. And there is a reptilian firmament around that school. So they, the reptilians have a key to get in and they can get in there because what the reptilians want is for you to be depressed, feeling low in energy. They want you to be in fight or flight. They want all these emotions to be there. That creates the food for them. That's, that's really what it is. So what I'm going to do right now to help you is to clear the school. Very often, when, when somebody does call in and, and we talk and, and they have this, this issue, it, it, quite often it is a problem in the house, that the house may be built on top of an ancient burial ground. It, it could be within a portal or a stargate or something that's, that's creating. Look at uh, star, uh, Stargate, not, uh, what's that ranch? Anyways, uh, uh, there is a portal and a lot of gray aliens come in and out. You said you said he ranch. No, no, not he said he a skinwalker. Skinwalker, yeah, Skinwalker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, anyways, but that, that's really what it is. So what, uh, can you give me the address of the school? Or, or a street at least? You know, let's do this. Why don't you put that into text so we're not identifying okay. a school? Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. But you can put, Go you can ahead take... and put that into text so that we don't publicize it. You know what? All I need you to do is just think of the school. Okay, just think of the school. All right, so we're going to take this lovely device. This is my Vesica Pisces, which facilitates the divine feminine that we're now in, this, this new energy. So I'm going to hold it up to the camera. All right, now for Valerie, Valerie's school, any and all reptilian firmaments, false. Remove all reptilian firmaments from Valerie's school. Reptilian Firmaments, false. Okay, Valerie, you tell me if you feel some energy moving, a tingle or something. Any and all reptilian firmament around the school and property, false. 
reptilian firmament. Okay, that firmament is lifted. Now, what we're going to do is replace it. Replace it with a source firmament. Within and around Valerie School source firmament true. Source firmament true. Source firmament is now in place. Valerie, did you feel any kind of energy moving? Yeah, I just had an image of just the school. There's something lifted from the school. Okay, that to me is, is significant. So let's take another look at the school. Now, uh, first I'll ask, do we need to work on Valerie or the school? Who should we work on? We're going to work on, on the school. And we're going to, what is the problem within the school? Ask the right question, get the right answer. Okay, now, yes, reptilians are within the schools. Schools. Reptilians from this. Okay, now, from the source of the school, everything has a soul. Uh, what, and again, what I call the, the, the soul is more the source. So we're going to clear the source of the school. Okay, the source of Valerie's school, all reptilians leave into ether. Cut all cords, connections, cast out any and all reptilians from the source of the school. The source of the school, all reptilians, false. Okay, those reptilians are leaving. Now the source of the school, true. The source of the school, true. Okay, so by saying the word true, that puts the source in the right vibration, okay? It, it puts it where it needs to be to be safe. Mm -hmm. How did that feel, Valerie? Yeah, just, uh, just had um, some images of just people um, talking to each other in the school. I know it sounds kind of um, unusual, but yeah, it was just a lighter, lighter feeling. Okay, the... that's exactly what we want, that feeling of lightness, that something has moved within there. Of course, you're connected to that school energetically, so you're going to feel what's going on with it. And, and that's really what's going on. Let's see. Now, what problem do we now need to work on within Valerie? Is it the school or Valerie? Okay, problem is the stressor within the school is, is, yeah, the school is done. Okay, now, hold on a second. We're going to find the stressor within Valerie. She is... Of, of okay, reptilians within her. Okay, we're going to go into your brain stem and remove reptilians. Okay, let's do this for Valerie. Okay, within Valerie's brain stem, disconnect any and all reptilians from Valerie's brain stem. Send them all into ether, please. Valerie's brain stem, all reptilians, false. Valerie's brain stem, reptilians, false. All right, those guys are leaving your brain stem. How did that feel? Uh, yeah, that feels pretty good, actually. Um, even when I was just talking to you and sitting down do, beforehand, I just felt really, really calm. Um, my thoughts past number of days have been very intense, obsessive, the same sort of thoughts all the time. And it's just calmed down, right? <laughs> so, so these reptilians, they, they do practice mind control. They'll put thoughts into your head. A lot of people call in and they complain about a stiff neck, a stiff lower back. That's where these guys like to get at you, is, is, is those areas, they, they really bring you down. They want you to walk around your head, looking down at your feet all the time. 
Ever, you ever watch people walking around and they're looking at their shoes? Okay? Be because nobody's looking forward. Nobody's looking ahead. So by lifting those guys out of there, now your thoughts are more so going to become your own. It's a wonderful thing to have your own thoughts, let me tell you. And, I'll, and you're going to feel lighter as if, okay, I can breathe now. I can go about my life and not have to worry about what's going on, that, um, things that I can't do anything about. I think it's the feeling of lightness is what, you know, um, something that's been really missing past. Yeah, that's, that's the big one. That's the big one. Let's see if there's something else here in my bag of tricks for you. Okay, what problem do we now need to work on with some Valerie? Okay, and problem is okay, problem within her. Okay, within her. Okay, brainstem is okay, so we're gonna remove we're gonna remove that that implant. Okay. From Valerie's brain stem, the reptilian implant. Reptilian implant false. Remove the reptilian probe implant from Valerie's brain stem and atlas. Valerie's brain stem and atlas. Reptilian probe implant false. And now for anybody else listening from the brainstem, reptilian probe implant false. And a little Christmas gift for everyone. What the heck? Why not? Reptilian probe implant, the brainstem of all listening false. So that implant now just got pulled out of your brainstem. Did you feel anything moving with that? felt something coming over and yeah. just lighting it up. I don't know if anybody else felt that. I just really felt that. I felt something here, kind of like it was weird. It was like there was like a line and it like it weird. I can't explain it. Like felt like something just lifted or like maybe like I had a helmet on and the helmet came lifted up a little bit or came off. I, yeah. yeah. So so that that probe that 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 we imagine. I mean, it could be in in many different ways, but we're we're calling it a probe or calling it an implant probe, but it, it could be. Uh, a, a, a veil, a bucket. <laughs> it could be, you know, well, a basket you of at, eggs. If you look at some of these like science fictiony kinds of things, a lot of times there is some sort of thing put over people's head, and then there's probes in the back, and there's things stuck to their head all over the place here. So, yeah, no, I mean it's entirely possible that it could be both. That there could be sure. something in the back, and so, have, yeah, or it just could be an energetic, an energetic field created around the head by the probe. So, I mean, that's the most likely thing. It's an energetic yeah. field that that has a purpose. So, so Valerie, you've been unplugged from those darn reptilians. Excellent. <laughs> okay, now, now let's let's place a firmament. A source firmament within and around Valerie to protect from the reptilians in any and all ET. Firmament of protection within and around Valerie, true. Firmament of protection within and around Valerie. There you go. Now you've got some protection. All right. Valerie, thank you very much. We're going to move on to our next. Uh, Bye, Valerie. Person. All righty. Thank you. Okay. So next up is Annie. Annie, welcome to Off Planet Radio. You're on with Chris Kaler. Hi. Thank you very much. What can we do for you, Annie? Well, uh, mine is physical. Um, I'm having ramifications from, uh, I had um, been, I'd received radiation treatments once a month for 10 years in the 50s and 60s for experimentation. And it left me with some, um, I get rare cancers from it and autoimmunes, which I've been able to overcome quite a bit. But now I'm having a lot of ramification from that last um, salivary gland cancer and on my whole left side. Uh, I have uh, pain, numbness, um, it's just not pleasant. Okay. <laughs> okay. First thing I'm seeing is, is possible trouble in the trigeminal nerve, which is a very big nerve. It's, it's uh, the only nerve in your body that's motor and sensor, and that 
that does transmit a lot of electrical impulses all over the place. It's part of the vagus system, which uh, is, is very important to have healthy. So, so you did radiation treatments. Was it, um, what was it, was it, uh, uh, um, did you take it in or was it like a, a beam of radiation? Uh, it was uh, machines. Beam. Okay. Okay, let's see. This it could be interesting. All, oh, it was in different points of the body, including head and neck. Okay, this this could be interesting. I always look forward to a case where I can really sink my teeth into and find some interesting things. Okay, let's see. What problem do we need to work on within Annie, please? Problem is that. Okay. Now, strontium is. Strontium is within her. Okay, so we're going to take the, the left trigeminal nerve and move out all the strontium that's built up within there, okay? okay. Here we go. Within Annie's left trigeminal nerve, strontium buildup and deposits false. Any and all strontium within the trigeminal nerve, the left trigeminal nerve, strontium buildup and deposits, false. So all we're doing here is making the intent through the sacred geometry for this stressor to vanish from Annie's body. Our intent is so incredibly strong, we just don't realize it, and that's one of the things these reptilians don't want us to realize. But I have beaten them to their game. Okay, Annie's left trigeminal nerve, all strontium is now leaving. Now, do you feel any sensations within that part of the body? Heat. Heat is good, okay. I like that one. Okay. What problem do we now need to work on within Annie? What city are you in, Annie? I'm living in Georgetown, Texas, north okay. of Austin. Yes. Okay, problem. okay, now, uranium is within her, okay, now, from the trigeminal nerve, uranium buildup and deposits, false. Annie's trigeminal nerve, uranium buildup and deposits, false. Uranium, false. Uranium buildup and deposits. Okay, that is lifting out. How's that do? You guys hear some of those sound frequencies? Anyone else hear them? That's really when you started doing that. There was yes, like a, I heard it too. It was like a wave. Yeah. Wave frequency. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was weird. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, keep going. I just thought that was an interesting, interesting something to add to the. I love freaking you out, Emily. I know that stuff you're that's me. happened before when we've done these, Chris. Yeah, you don't freak me out, Chris. These, like frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, nothing freaks me out. The whole time I have my healings with Chris, the lights are flashing on and off in his room and in my room, and <laughs> I somehow notice them and he doesn't, which <laughs> but it doesn't freak me out. Annie, I know where Georgetown is. I used to live in Austin. Very good. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Okay, Annie, how does it feel now, dear? Um, more heat. More heat? Okay, good. Good. I, does the pain level change at all? Well, it's kind of hard to say. They're, they're, uh, I'm starting to have more tingling than numbness, so that's a good okay. thing. Okay, that's good. The tingling is the energy getting coming in and out and making changes. But still plenty of pain. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, so now what problem do we need to work on with and Annie, please? And the problem is, problem is, okay, now, okay, the creation of pain is from, okay, the creation of pain is from damage. Okay, so what we're going to do is now repair the damage in that trigeminal nerve. Okay, here we go. Simple as ask, as saying the words, making the intent. Okay, here we go. From Annie's left trigeminal nerve, any and all damage, false. Left side of the body, trigeminal nerve, damage, false. 
lift all of the damage from the trigeminal nerve. Okay, that is working hard. Trigeminal nerve damage. Okay, now we're going to add some more energy. And his trigeminal nerve use human stem cells to completely repair and restore the trigeminal nerve. The myelin sheath, the nerve fibers, the synapses, all components of the trigeminal nerve use human stem cells to repair and restore that trigeminal nerve. Okay, that's starting to work. Okay, so that is now done. How's that feeling now, dear? It's lessening. Okay, now we're going to do one more. Danny's trigeminal nerve true. Trigeminal nerve true. Just by saying the word true aligns it with its highest possible alignment and vibration. Annie's trigeminal nerve true. Trigeminal nerve. Okay, there we go. That is finished. Is that still getting a little less of pain? Yeah, it's it's almost feeling like uh, uh, some of the circulation may be getting back in there some. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now let's check again. Now, with, with these types of clearings, when we when I do them on radio shows, I prefer to do like a full session. But but these ones where we're doing a few shortcuts to, just to get a result, so we can uh, you know give you some some comfort. But it's still going to be very effective. Okay, what problem now within Miss Annie? Problem is okay. We're going to. Okay, restore the trigeminal nerve to source. Okay, beautiful. Annie's left trigeminal nerve source true. Source true. Trigeminal nerve source true. Annie's left trigeminal nerve. Source true. Trigeminal nerve. There we go. That's better. So now that nerve is now connected to source, and a, a much deeper healing can now can now happen. How does it feel now, dear? A little looser. So so definitely a noticeable difference. Yeah, it's definitely looser. Okay. Just by making the intent for these things to happen, as humans, we can do this. If I can do it, I'm, I'm, you know, Emily can do it. Why not? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's check one more. I, I don't want to leave this sitting. Okay, what problem do we now need to work on with then? Annie, please? And the problem is... Okay, here we go. Let's see. Okay, there's a vortex of vortex astral self vortex of uh, okay the ore of plutonium is within her. Okay, we're going to go into your astral self now and pull out the plutonium. This got very deep. I got into your energy. All right. And he's astral self. Plutonium false. All of the plutonium buildup and deposits within Annie's astral self false. Okay, beautiful. There it is. Now let's go into Annie's entire body. Entire physical body, all strontium, plutonium, uranium, all radioactive isotopes within all the cells and molecules, false. Completely neutralize all of the radionic isotopes, all of the plutonium, strontium, and uranium within Annie's entire body. 
There we go. So all that now is gone. And I feel pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly are, dear. That, that, that was, I, I, that whatever you just did just now, I almost felt like nauseous. I'm enjoying all of these healings along with, <laughs> along with you guys, and my body's very sensitive. Well, let, let, let me tell you, you got yeah. a clearing from that because everybody's got an amount of yeah. radioactive isotopes within them. You look at what's coming from Japan. Yeah. Come on, we're, we're full of this stuff. If you took a Geiger counter, you know, to the top of my head, I'm sure it would blow up. <laughs> More on your head there, right? <laughs> now we know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Annie. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Annie. Chris. All righty. So moving on to the next person. Next up is Krisha. I think she has a little bit of a different request for Chris. And uh, Krisha, welcome to Off Planet Radio. You're with Chris Kaler. Hi, dear. Unmute, unmute yourself. I'll unmute you. There you go. Oh, unmute yourself. It's still muted. Drop the needle. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hello. All right. So, so you and I, uh, we, we talked a bit before the show, which was very beneficial. So why don't you explain exactly what it is you'd like to accomplish today? Yeah, my issue is with my eight-year-old daughter, uh, Lily. She's extremely difficult, has been since she was like four months old. It's kind of something that it's a source of a lot of turmoil in the family and it seems to be totally unfounded. She's perfect at school. She was perfect in daycare and everything and she's extremely intelligent, but she just doesn't quite care. She doesn't want to, you know, eat when we ask her to eat. She doesn't want to sleep when we ask her to sleep. You know, I mean, basically anything possible, she's not going to do it. She's just got her own mind and no value placed on the parents like literally since birth and um at conception there was a lot of negative energy my best friend had uh just lost her two-year-old daughter to a rare metabolic neurological um, disease so we were all in mourning and uh my friend even disclosed to me about like two years later that she she allowed herself to hate me for basically having my daughter and she had lost hers and she knew she of all the people in her life she could hate me because our relationship would survive it which it did but i'm not quite so sure that we survived it unscathed energetically at least so so now you also mentioned that your mother-in-law is is somewhat Yes. Of, of this nature okay, that, that's me raised an eyebrow now what your daughter has is something called emily moyer syndrome <laughs> yes maybe <laughs> I, I was i was thinking the whole time i was like oh that sounds just like me when i was little uh, you know? okay. I, I, I was i was i was fairly well behaved but i wouldn't eat when they wanted i wouldn't sleep when they wanted i got studies in school i was great at gymnastics but yeah, intelli the problem is, is that she's intelligent, but let's let Chris do his. Yes, yes. So, so, so to me, when, when you mentioned that your mother-in-law was, was also uh, like this, uh, right away, yeah, that, that said something very to similar. me. similar. Yeah, and, and for your friend to say she allowed herself to hate you, I mean, there's no good energy and hate whatsoever. No. No. So, so, I mean, the, the casting of, of these minor first-level spells is, is very possible, but let's see what's going on. Let's check this out, and we will move some energy all right okay sorry what's your daughter's name again lily lily okay what problem within the lily and possibly her connection with her grandmother what problem and the problem is problem is okay moloch is within lily's Okay, hey, now, what this tells me right off the bat is your daughter has been put up for sacrifice. Anytime Moloch is present, Moloch is the demon of sacrifice. I know this sounds scary, but we can fix this, okay? Let's do that. Okay, within Krisha's daughter, Lily, within the source, cut all cords and connections with Moloch. Cast out Moloch from Lily's source and send Moloch into ether and Moloch is part of the reptilian group okay i think he's the chief executive officer or something like that <laughs> okay from lily's source Moloch leave into ether now the important thing here is is the identification so if i identified Moloch 
and it is Moloch, he has to leave. If it's okay. if it's a, a, an Egyptian god, let's say Set or, or Toth, he doesn't have to leave. So, so it's very important with the dowsing to be as accurate as you can. Uh, if you're playing hide and seek, one, two, three on Christian, but it's really Emily, Emily's not yeah. caught. Okay. Yeah. Same, same thing here. So well, we just disconnected her. Uh, now we need to do this. Remove Lily's source. Any and all altars. Lily's source. Okay, she's removed from all altars, sacrificial altars. Now let's go a little further. Just because I know, because I do this every day for people. Any and all reptilian sacrificial rituals within Lily. False. All reptilian sacrificial rituals. False. So she's now disconnected from that energy. There's a lot of people that come my way and they say, hey, Chris, you know what? There's something at night that is having their way with me and there's nobody in the bed with me. The, as soon as I mention this, people are like, yep, 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 yep. This is a sexual ritual that happens in, in the etheric and, and you actually feel that something is going on. It's, it happened to me once, okay? Way before I was doing this work. I remember very clearly, I'm standing in a line somewhere to get into a bar to see some, some skinhead show, I don't know. And all of a sudden, I feel something behind me. It's like, what the heck is that? Ouch. And it goes away, and it comes back again later. And I'm, I'm thinking, something's wrong. Oh, well, anyways, let's go in and have fun. But now I realize what it was. It was one of these reptilians having to go with old Chris. Wow, that's funny you say that. I was actually talking to her the other day, and I was trying to get a feel for why she doesn't ever like to be alone. Because she wants to do everything herself, but you want she wants somebody there to watch her do it. And I'm like, you know, I was trying to get to the source of it, and she's like, I don't know. It's just when I'm alone, I feel like somebody's watching me. So I yeah, think exactly. She's, yeah, she's yeah. This this sounds very that. very very familiar. Okay, now what problem within Lily, please? And the problem is, is, okay, now, okay, there is a witchcraft spell on her. Okay, there is a witchcraft spell, probably your friend. Okay, any and all witchcraft spells from Lily's source False. Lift all the witchcraft spells from Lily's source. Lily's source. There we go. Witchcraft spells are lifted. Easy as that. We're getting closer to these uh, energies of ascension, and all these energies are, are very weak. They're, they're, it may have taken five sessions to get where I am right now five years ago, but now these, these uh, energies are very weak, so they're very easy just to, to tell to go away. Okay. Now, again, what problem... Within Lily, please. Problem is, okay, now is the stressor within her, okay, firmament of reptilians within her, okay, Lily's source, reptilian firmaments, false. Lift the reptilian firmament from Lily's source, please. Reptilian firmament, false. Okay, now exchange it with a source firmament from Lily's source. Source firmament, true. Source firmament, true. Source firmament, is now in place. Do you feel any energy moving, Krisha? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're going to feel something. Your mom, you're going to feel it, okay. <laughs> All right, now let's see what problem within the lily, please. And problem is reptilians within her, within her, okay. Let's do the brainstem thing. From Lily's brainstem, all reptilians, false. Beautiful. Easy as that. Remove 
the reptilian probe insert from the brain stem. Easy as that. Beautiful. Okay, now let's see. Let's see. What is next for Lily, please? And next is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now is. Okay, again, Moloch within her. First, okay, so she was sacrificed at her first creation. Okay, so this is following her. It's almost like a karmic debt. This is following her that sacrifice is happening. Let's go all the way back to Lily's first creation, Moloch false. Lily's first creation, Moloch false. Disconnect, cut all cords and connections with Moloch and Lily's first creation. Okay, that is gone. Lily's first creation, source true. Lily's first creation, source true. So now um, charging first creation with source is going to butterfly effect to the infinite now and create more of, a, of a, a positive pattern of polarity with, within all of her lives. Okay. How's that feeling now? Better, better. You're, you're, you're feeling Basically. uplifted with that, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Chris, I th you were probably just joking when you said it was Emily Moyer syndrome, <laughs> but actually that just sounded like a lot of our first sessions. Uh, it, actually, you know what? It does resonate, eh? Yeah, and, you know, Krisha, you've written to me before, I think, on Facebook or something like that, and, you know, we should have a chat sometime, um, yeah. you know, because there's probably some other things you can do to help her also in terms of with diet and whatnot. Um, yeah. I, I'm feeling strong resonance with this kid, and, yeah, I mean, I'd say, like, three or four of the things that just came up and what he was doing were things that came up in some of my early my early yeah. healing sessions. So he was, I don't know if he was joking or if he could already see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what I thought was interesting was that um, – Am I muted? Oh. No, we can hear no. you. Okay. I, the, the parallels between your daughter and my oldest grandson. What you described there is exactly what we've been going through with my oldest grandson. I went over to his house one night and sat with him. He was seeing shadow beings. Oh, wow. And you know something? They were there. And he yeah. was seeing them. And so... The other side of that is he's got a very defiant attitude, and yet he's a very sweet little boy. Again, very bright. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of pulling this in right now. When Chris was doing that, I was kind of triangulating energy off to, to Brennan as well because I, I feel like this is really a common – there's a common root to a lot of these things. Definitely. She's very chemically sensitive, too. We watch the food dyes, the sugar – everything mm -hmm. we possibly can yeah a, a lot of these energies will, will cause those things to happen uh you know what when you, a person is sensitive to, to gluten and, and all these various things that tend to come up it's more so there is an energetic component to it to make this happen to lower the vibration there it is again yeah. lower the vibration so so now children are, are very innocent so so they see things and say, oh, well, there's something there. It's kind of scaring me. Mommy, daddy, something's in my room. Come on, kid, go to sleep. Yeah. Close the door, go to sleep. It's no, there. <laughs> there's something in their room, okay? <laughs> there is something in their room. Now, my son, I can tell when he's playing a game. My son's six years old, and he will, he will make something up. Uh, you know, oh, I know daddy is going to fix things, so, so I'm going to call daddy. He's going to come into my room and fix it so I can, you know, cuddle with daddy for a little while. I'm like, there's nothing in this house, son. There's nothing like that can exist in this house, okay? Daddy's got it under control. Um, but no, you, you really have to pay attention when, when a child is explaining these things. The, the invisible friend is real, okay? And these invisible friends can really F with a kid's mind. Oh, yeah. Okay? Um, you know, people who, who, who are uh, suicidal, people who... Are, uh, this reminds me actually of uh, the show we did with uh, Rock Estaldo. Rock Estaldo, yeah. yeah. And he was talking about the uh, imaginary, well, the real Imag beings that were actually 
actually trying to tempt him to bite into electrical wire. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. these are tricksters. These are serious entities. Yeah, no, there's, I mean, I, for my, when I was little and even till now, I, I've always struggled with sleep. When I was little, I did not want to go to sleep. I was terrified to be in my bedroom alone at night with the lights off and go to sleep. I would, as a small child, I would stay up all night and still go to school the next day. And it was because something was happening during, while, you know, while I was sleeping. It was, you know, I think my parents were just had had enough with me and they just, whatever, they just wanted me to go to sleep. But like, yeah. I was very sure, a hundred percent sure and still am that there was something going on at night. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. and I would, I would be, you know, people, the neighbors would see my bedroom light on at three, four, five o'clock in the morning on school nights and probably thought what on earth is going on but i was just absolutely insistent that i did not want to go to sleep yeah the the, the reality of all these spirits all these things that go bump in the night that there's it's a hundred percent um you know i could i could sit here and tell stories all night what i've seen in, in my uh it, work doing this with people i've seen 300 pound bikers get lifted up and thrown against the wall you know all this stuff exists. So, so yes, it, it, parents, if you have a young child and, and they're talking about like this and they're exhibiting some strange behavior, you have to address it. Otherwise, that person then becomes that murderer down the road. Oh, that yeah. person that you know starts to, to drown cats and stuff like that. You don't want that to happen because now she, you're... And she's mentioned suicide. She's like, oh, I'm just going to kill myself. Okay, you know? and, and, and that's I mean, something you can't take lightly. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. No. That's, that's why so, I'm so here. Now, now Mol- Moloch is the demon of sacrifice. That's what he wants is for whoever he is inhabiting to take their own life, then he gets your soul. Okay, yeah. that, that is energy to these beings, and that's what they want. So, so for you to say that means a lot, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and everything I'm finding with, with what I know tells me that, yes, this person definitely has that possibility of one day going there, whether it's tomorrow or 20 years down yeah. the road and that's what i've spent my last eight years trying yeah. to prevent you know okay. well this clearing will certainly make, make a, a difference let's see uh, what problem now within lily okay let's go into lily's subconscious lily's subconscious any and all mind control reptilian mind control and suicide thoughts false Lily's subconscious, reptilian mind control, suicide thoughts, suicide curses, suicide pacts, and covenants, false. Okay, those are all lifted off. Okay, let me check. I felt that one, too. (laughs) Yeah, I I did, too. (laughs) That's a heavy energy. That's a heavy energy. You had, like, a jerk emotion, and you jerked right at the same time. It was fighting back. It was fighting back. (laughs) Okay, what problem now within the lily, please? Let's do one more. And the problem is... Okay, now is... Okay, now let's shift Lily into the seventh dimension of love. Lily's source, Lily's subconsciousness, Lily's entire being. Let's just transition her into the seventh dimension of love, please. Shift Lily into the seventh dimension of love. Lily's entire being, seventh dimension of love, crew. Seventh dimension. There we go. She is now in. So she's in a, in a, a very good place of safety right now. Oh, good. <laughs> um, you might want to monitor the situation for a couple of weeks and see what changes. If, yeah. the, if she still exhibits that something is going on, get a hold of me and I'll help you out some more, okay? Yeah, I have is no it, doubt. Some yeah, of it's just going to be our habit. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but uh, a lot of those habits are just subconscious. And if you mm-hmm. clear out that subconscious, then all of a sudden they just fall off like leaves off a tree and, and uh, things change. Okay. But, uh, but monitor the situation because we don't want this escalating any further. I mean, we, we definitely could go quite a bit deeper in, in, into things that, that, that are there. And it, it does get very deep at times but because she's still very young. Things are still quite fresh and, and it would be a lot easier cleanup, but monitor the situation. If you need me, I'll be there for you. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, Emily and Randy. Absolutely, you guys are wonderful. It, it, hit me up on Facebook or however sometime, and we'll have a chat. That's oh, definitely. Stuff you like for sure. Yeah, yeah. Keep us definitely. advised on the progress on this, because uh, yeah. 
Uh, I will. You're dealing with a really heavy situation there, and we just oh. send our hearts out right now. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Krisha. And we are moving on now. And next up is Allison. Allison, uh, unmute yourself. Welcome to Off Planet Radio. You're with Chris Kaler. Hi. So hello. my hello, Miss Allison. How are you? I are good. <laughs> so my issue, um, well, I have, I could go on for days, but the one I'm really, really looking for here is I have some skin issues and I have um, addressed, I have taken my diet down, you know, as clean as I can get, um, but, you know, deficiencies. I work with crystals, uh, energy, everything, and I cannot kick, I've got a back of my neck and shoulders right now. And I have a new fun thing on my leg that is um, concerning. And I try not to approach it from fear or any sort of, you know, reactivity. But I just can't seem to get this one myself. Is it an eczema or a psoriasis kind of thing? Yeah, it's more, I feel like it's more of an infection. But it's, it's along those lines. Like, it looks like that. I've been treating it with, you know, different uh, black seed oil, neem, all kinds of stuff. And... Um, I can keep it somewhat suppressed, but it is it does not heal. And lately, I've been having some swelling. Okay, so the back of the neck, the shoulders, and a bit on on the leg, correct? Yep. Yep. So, so so here's a situation where where a person is doing all kinds of great natural stuff and probably doing the right things, but the problem won't go away. It's an energetic problem, and we need to, the only one way to deal with this is with energy. You can only heal things of energy with energy, right? So let's. Let's see now with an Ellison, what problem do we need to work on? I'm quite sure I know what this is already, but let's just verify. And the problem is the skin. Problem is, is reptilian DNA. You got reptilian DNA in your skin. There, there's that. Uh, it's hybrid. scaly. I tell people yeah. all the time. It's like I'm pushing scales. It's reptilian. That's so, uh, oh yay! Not gay, but yay. <laughs> yeah. You know, normally uh, any kind of skin problem is usually a bowel problem. It's the toxins coming out of the skin, uh, nine times out of ten. But this, this is now that we may get there. But let's remove that DNA out of your skin. And you tell me how you feel when we do it, okay? Okay. All right. These are not actors, people. These are real problems, okay? <laughs> now, within Allison's skin, skin cells, reptilian DNA false. Reptilian DNA false. Allison's skin and skin cells, reptilian DNA false. Reptilian DNA false. <clears throat> lots of movement here, lots of movement. From Ellison's skin and skin cells, reptilian DNA false. <clears throat> okay, that is moving off. How'd that feel, Allison? It itches less. Okay. And, um, I'm, I receive auditory, and it's much more quiet and still right now. I don't have okay. that, you know. Okay, good. Now let's go a little further. Allison's skin and skin cells, DNA, human, source, true. DNA, human, source, true. Allison's skin and all skin cells, the DNA, human, source, True. Human source. True. Okay, that is lifting off. Now, it's important to know that uh, certain skin diseases, shingles is rept a reptilian disease. Lyme disease is reptilian. There's a lot of things that, that, we, that occur within us that are a reptilian DNA. So that, again, there's the duality right there. We're living with, with that. Now, uh, let's go into Allison's skin cells. Use human stem cells to repair, heal, and restore the skin cells. Human stem cells to repair, heal, and restore. Okay. 
Okay, those stem cells are going in. There we go. Okay, those are now in. How does that feel, Allison? My, I can, I'm touching the spot on my leg, and I can feel that it's not as, it's cooler to the touch already. Yeah, that's so, great. So, so there's probably a good chance that it was a form of shingles, okay? I've never had chicken pox, though. Doesn't matter. Does doesn't it? matter. No, it doesn't matter. If you've got that DNA within your body, it's going to exhibit, okay? Now, okay, so that does feel different already. Inflammation is gone. Itching is gone. What problem do we now need to work on with an Allison? And the problem is, okay, within her, then the skin cell is, is stressor of high levels of okay here we go with an Allison skin cells radioactive isotopes pulse Allison skin cells all radioactive isotopes strontium uranium plutonium pulse in the skin cells Strontium, plutonium, uranium, false. Okay, a lot of energy moving here. A lot of energy. Allison's skin cells, strontium, plutonium, uranium, and all isotopes. False. There we go. That's lifting off. How does that feel, dear? I feel an overall sense of relief. When you said isotopes earlier, I wrote it down like three times. I knew there was something with that. But yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's better. We have some superficial, superficiality to heal here, but the, you know, the internal stuff is definitely. So I, can, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I have a question. Cause it, so let me see if I can ask this in a way that will make sense to everybody. So, We've talked about some of this um, sound and light weaponry and stuff like that, Chris, right? So a lot of times, so I have some issues with my skin as well, different issues than you have. But I tend to notice flare-ups with the issues with the skin when I've experienced some kind of what I would consider some kind of fuckery, for lack of a better term. Whether it be something in my, it happens when I'm sleeping, whether I'm taken out in my sleep, or whether I'm hit with some kind of like strange energy or whatever during the day. Usually with about 24 to 36 hours after I have an experience like that, I start to have some telltale time signs on my skin uh, in certain areas that it's always the same. And it's usually within a period of after that experience has happened and it lasts for you know, a certain number of days. Is this sort of the scar or the remnants from what, are they applying some sort of frequency weapon that, like to the DNA to try and rewrite the code of our DNA with some sort of reptilian code? And is the heat or the, the frequency from that leaving for like residue or, or scar or marking or whatever on our skin. Absolutely. It's, it's doing damage. Okay. Right. So, so could, if, if those uh, sound weapons have a, a, a degree of, of radioactivity within them, whatever they're using, whatever weapon they're using, I mean, they could, they could have popsicle weapons as far as I know. I mean, it, it's so many things we don't know. It, it's, but. Inter it's interesting that you said that you have it on the back of your neck and your shoulders. Mm -hmm. One of the kinds of things that I get hit with, it's interesting. This is the first time I've really heard you talk so much about the pro, but I've always kind of known about this because a lot of my trauma stems from back here. What, what will happen is something will feel like it's coming in right here and there'll be a tremendous amount of pressure pushing down on me. I'll feel it through my arms to the point where I can't really lift my arms and it will last generally in the range from probably in, in truth, probably between 30 seconds and two minutes, but sometimes it feels like forever. And it's just, it, you know, you know how um, uh, some of these, uh, these radioactive isotopes they're like they're if they were in your body they're heavy they're like metallic and they're heavy it almost feels like something like that is going through like have you ever had a, um like a the kind of vaccines you have to get before you travel and you can almost feel like the metal traveling down your arm it almost feels sort of like that but with some heat and some pressure downwards and I'm this, just this yeah. leg when i stand up i can feel it drop and i am four foot ten i have a very similar 
story that to you, right? I remember really weird, really weird shit. And um, I have markings on my back where the scarring forms perfect geometric shapes. Yeah, I have it's, stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. freaking bizarre. Yeah, we, yeah, I have that as well. I have yeah, the, where the, I the, the pyramidal at, it yeah, at the base of um, my neck. Yeah. Mine yeah. Is on both shoulders and oh, on the wow. back of my neck and my leg almost looked like it had letters in it the other day. Yeah, like, I've had I'm, yeah. I'm covering that up. I don't want to see that shit. So <laughs> are these like are these like uh, night visitations or something that's happening in dream state? Do you, can you can you track when these occur? Me? Yeah. Um yeah, dream I I I don't uh, sleep is a big issue for me. I don't yeah. like to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, We're so all in the dream, club here. If you want to call yeah, it boy. dream state, we can call it that, but I don't, right. I don't think that's really the word. Um, I mean, I, I lock myself in my room. I've come in with dirt, home with dirty feet. Okay, so it's like, and I live in Florida. You know, we don't go barefoot here because it's dirty. So, like, I yeah, it happens in dream state. There are times I'm working and I'll just like zone out for a second. I'm like, oh no, come bring, bring yeah, you're, it back. You're, you're experiencing abduction. There is abduction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I've had it my whole life, um, yeah. and now I fight back. And they—that's where I feel like the skin stuff is coming in because I'm yeah. like, I fuck. I, oh, sorry. I really, really. That's okay. We're fight. not family friendly. Here. Okay. Well, that's that's the whole thing. Is like I didn't have any of when I was unaware of what was going on. I didn't yep. have any of this stuff. The the, okay. the 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 markings and the difficulties and the pains and all that kind of stuff came as I started to become aware of it. As I started to like question it. As I started to fight back against it and all that kind of, you know, um, so yeah, at first I, you know, for, probably once we become feisty about it, they have to work a lot harder to do what they're doing. So there's a lot stronger weaponry kind of, you know, the general hypnosis doesn't work anymore. So they have to just basically take you out. Let's, um, let's do a couple quick more clearings for, for yeah. Allison so we can close yes, this up because we don't want to leave it open. Yeah. Hey, now, Allison's hey. plasma self. Plasma is one of the four states of matter. And Allison's plasma self, abduction, false. Abduction, false. Plasma self, abduction, false. Okay, so that is over now. Allison's plasma self, true. Return Allison's plasma self. Turn Allison's plasma self. Allison's plasma self true. Plasma self true. All right, that is now back in place. Now, all of Allison's firmaments source true. All firmaments plasma self, source self, astral self. All of Allison's firmaments source true. Okay, so now Allison, what you can do on a daily basis, Emily, what you can do on a daily basis, keep intending that your firmaments are source true. Okay, make sure that you've got the key for your own firmaments. Okay. How does that feel, does that feel Allison? Is that, is that different? Yeah, when you uh, pulled the, you know, when you pulled it out of the plasma field, I felt. Um, and I could almost feel it like a whoosh. And then when you did source true, I could feel it oh, like like what I call hardening. I'm in IT, so everything gets hardened, you know, but I'm, I call it, <laughs> well, it's hard not, you know, it's harder. It feels more uh, fortified or something. Like Good, yeah. A bit stronger. Yeah, yeah the, the firmaments are a protection. That is our protection. There it is right there. We've been asking about this all our lives. What, how can I protect myself? Firmament source true. Okay, that, that's very important. So that's going to help you a lot. Thank you so cool. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allison. It's nice chatting with you as well. Thank you. Alrighty. Yeah. And so next up is Carolyn. Carolyn, unmute yourself and welcome to Off Planet Radio. Hi, Emily. Hi, Randy. Hi, Chris. Hello, hello. Hey, hello. hey thanks so much for this opportunity. It's been fabulous listening to everything I I just enjoyed it so much and learned a lot. And, and there's just the little piece of resonance in everybody, almost everybody who's spoken. And for Kisha, I just wanted to say, if she's still on, um, I have the version of the, your daughter as an adult. 
So bless for having, you know, I, there has been one healing that's happened, but there needs to be more. So, um, is that what we're going to do today, Carolyn? Or? No, I don't think so. So let me, I, I, I'm sorry to, to take up some time. I feel like I just have the poo poo platter of maladies going on right now. And I, I have a sense though, they might be a little connected. So part of it is, um, I, an inability to verbalize so bear with me please um when you had shared emily about things started happening you know as the waking up and and the understanding came that's definitely been my experience and um so i left a career and i and i left a church and i left friends and you know, and my world has gotten, you know, substantially smaller. And I tried um, so much to, to connect, but, you know, things are happening as they should be. But I chose a healing to go to school for a healing profession that requires my voice. And I'm finding that even in healings, it's always about the throat. Them suckers always have me by the throat and um i'm going to try and put this into the words the best i can i am a communicator and i generally have no problem sharing my opinion how i feel about things and um and in being just loving to speak and share from the heart and i can still do that in writing but i'm having this issue now it's like a chasm between the thoughts and the things that need to come out and being able to verbalize that and put it into words it is like a a river with no boat and i have a disconnect happening and i know that there's stuff grabbing onto my throat all the time i don't know if that's a part of it and part of it um i thought well you know let's just work on you so i i started to engage in um, some shadow work with a group of you know wonderful people and i thought you know let's just get down to business and get some of that done and i'm having trouble sharing anything in the group and even now as i was listening i i was dreading the the thought of having to come on here and try and share and speak I feel I feel muted and I had a big so I'm wondering if 5G isn't already rolled out I just have the sense maybe it's beta tested in my area I don't know and things have come to a crescendo in the last couple of days but finally today with said daughter I just lost it and I just scream so loud I just can't you know I just can't do this right now you know because it's always happens when with technology when i'm trying to hook into like this shadow work stuff or to come on to here you know there's a, a blow up at the house or something's always messing with me and standing in the way of of me trying to move forward to be helpful and do my part when when, when you have an issue trying trying to to, to push forward your communication does it feel like a fear or is it just the words don't want to do their what they're supposed to I think it's both it is both I have um, thoughts that will come into my mind about second guessing the validity or um, the worthiness of what I'm about to say okay. um, those types of things and and also just a, a, a chasm like I said where I'm um, like a Rolodex going through my mind. I can't even, I have a vocabulary and, and sometimes I search for even some basic words. Okay, so I'm looking right now, torrent of communication mm -hmm. skills is reptilians within her. Okay, here we go, reptilians again. From Carolyn's throat. All reptilians false. Cut all cords and connections and cast out the reptilians from Carolyn's throat and send them into ether, please. From Carolyn's throat, reptilians false. Any and all reptilians false. 
Those son of a guns are leaving. You feel anything lifting or moving? It's like what happens, Chris, whenever I get a healing, it feels draining down my throat. They're moving. The game is mm -hmm. afoot. Okay. Mm -hmm. What problem do we now need to work on within Carolyn, please? Problem is, is, is in her. Okay. Now, so what they're going from here down into your source, your solar plexus. That's where the source is. Okay, from Carolyn's source, all reptilians leave into ether. Cut all cords, connections, and cast out the reptilians from Carolyn's source into ether, please. There they are. From Carolyn's source, all reptilians leave. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. How dare you kick me on the way out? <laughs> Did, did that Sorry. clear? <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I wanted to faint. Okay. Did you feel anything, Emily? <laughs> like I did. It was very, I, I, I felt like a, there was like a lightheadedness that went sort of like this. It was weird. It mm. came like this and out. That, yeah, mm -hmm. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what problem was in Carolyn, please? Problem is reptilians are within her. Okay, from Carolyn's plasma self, all reptilians leave into ether. Cast out all reptilians from Carolyn's plasma self. There they go. Okay, Carolyn's plasma self firmament source true. Plasma self firmament source true. Okay, the door is now locked. How's that feeling, Carolyn? Good. Okay. Yeah. Now, what problem within Miss Carolyn, please? And the problem is, okay, now is, now is what, 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 okay. Okay, what problem was in Carol? Okay, reptilians within her. Okay, from Carolyn's consciousness, subconsciousness, mind, thoughts. Reptilian mind control, false. Reptilian mind control. False. Okay, that's lifting off. Now, again, within Carolyn's mind, thoughts, consciousness, subconsciousness, all reptilians leave into ether. Okay, the train is leaving. Train is leaving. How's that feeling, dear? It feels good. This is like a whole platoon of those bad boys, right? <laughs> you were taking over for sure. Wow. I have a quick question that's come up while you're doing this. Is part of the reason, I, mean, be, I, I, I in some ways know the answer, but I'm going to have a more specific question about it. Is the reason that reptilians are such a big deal because we have a reptilian part of our brain? So it's like automatically having something for them to zero in on, right? Like, you know, we don't have like, you know, with some of these other entities and things that are out there, like you seem really focused on the reptilians. Is the reason that they're such a big deal for us because we have something of them inside of us that they're able to really exploit? And so I, the reason I asked that is because I know that the way like the human brain works is that it's very rare, that, except really only in REM sleep and a few other states, is the right and left side of the brain kind of functional and being used at the same time. If we kind of consider the mammalian brain and the reptilian brain the same way, right, right, that they're not really usually functioning at the same time, you're usually in one brain or the other, they sort of wait for these opportunities when you're in the reptilian brain and then they're able to, or, or, or you know, and then they're able to sort of come in. I noticed that when I do, one of the activities that I engage in a lot is running and exercising and that right, right, left motion brings both sides of the brain on online in the waking state. And I have periods of much clearer thought when I feel like I have access to my highest self in a way that I don't 
necessarily at other times. Is part of this getting, you know, part of this for us getting to a place where we don't have so many op so many periods of time where we're just in our reptilian brain because that gives us more then more access to us. Well, th there's a few different scenarios that I found out about. One of them is. Is there does that make sense? Did that make sense? What I just asked? It, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. okay. So, so one of the, the scenarios I work with is that in one of our existences, we were a reptilian. Right. When, we, when we died, we chose to reincarnate here on this planet to participate in the ascension. Okay. So now there's a group of, of uh, rebel reptilians saying, not so fast. You're not leaving without a fight. So, so they're, they're, they're causing turmoil within us, lower our vibration. So we can't do that. Okay. Uh, a lot of people uh, are here as let's call them star seeds to help in the ascension, to help people go there. And they're getting attacked in a very big way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's, there's another scenario where somebody has been chosen to, to fight in a reptilian war. They're a super soldier. They've been cloned, let's say, <laughs> or, or manipulated one of their bodies taken out and used. So through quantum entanglement, if, if somebody gets shot in the eye with a laser, here you get a sore eye. Okay, so, yeah. so there's a bunch of different scenarios that, that I address, but, but ultimately, I, I mean, the, the concepts of, that they developed us for, for slavery, for their right. use for food. On and off, right. Yeah, yeah. All, that, all that stuff. I mean, it, it's all here and there and everywhere. So, so, so their, uh, their, their uh, chances of getting into us are, are better because. Well, of course, they have the keys. Okay, okay they so, get into the firmament. Okay, so then there's one more question that comes from this. Because one of the things that, like, that, I, that I do, and I think part of why I've had so much success with some of the things you've done with me, is because I'm also always working on myself. And one of the things I find to be uh, through and through characteristics of reptilians is that they say one thing and do another, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. And so what I find is when I'm in when I'm doing a good job working on myself, which means being in alignment with myself, which means making my uh, walk match my talk, then I feel seem to be less open, less uh, susceptible to some of these kinds of things. And I like the idea for me, like I love like the healings and the kind of work that you do, but I also think it's really important that people have things that they can work on themselves, Absolutely, bring themselves into alignment. And what I find is that a lot less, you know, and sometimes it's hard because it is sometimes a daily, you have to work on it daily and it's a struggle and we sometimes get tired and sometimes get lazy. But when I start to slip out of alignment with myself a little bit, then these things tend to happen a little more often. And it's hard sometimes to fight to pull yourself back into alignment, but that's like a really important part of this work. And that will make the difference between whether these healings are temporary or whether they're more long lasting. Would you agree? Sure. sure. You, do, you do have to keep the house clean. Okay. Yep. You clean it once, you're going to have to clean it again. So, so my, my affirmations are, you know, I come down in, in my office here, and I'll, I'll start off my source true, my, my consciousness true, subconscious is true, higher self. I'll go through this, this uh, two-minute spiel of aligning and clearing and making sure things are still in alignment so that when I help somebody, they're getting the, the best that they can get. Uh, Carolyn, um, yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. do you feel that, that things are cleared out, or should we do another one? No, that feels good. I just have a quick question. I sure. um, can't find out why my hair is falling out. I, I had a bioresonance, the skio machine. They don't see anything there and had tests and, you know, my diet's pretty great and I, it's got me stumped. What, what you might want to do is increase your silica. So diatomaceous earth, uh, food grade diatomaceous earth, uh, okay. a tablespoon a day for a couple of weeks will we'll put that nutrient in your body. Your hair loves it. It used okay. to be a shampoo is a beer shampoo. And the, the reason why they put beer in there, because beer is filtered through silica diatomaceous earth filters. So it gets that, that silica within the beer. So you use it on your hair, and that's what makes, makes your hair look good. I wouldn't know. I don't care. Anyway. I was going to say. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> Maybe Here we have hair tips from a bald guy. Right. <laughs> uh, that, that, that was good. Actually, Perfect. Carolyn. Yes. Yeah, and I also think the diatomaceous earth might help you with some of the problems you're having with your throat and words. What I noticed when, because Chris at one point many years ago prescribed diatomaceous earth for me as well, and I was having trouble with like anxiety in the stomach, like a, like a feel, like a nervousness that was making me struggle to be able to put my thoughts into words clearly. And what I noticed the diatomaceous earth was it calmed me down, it made me less nervous, and then that made me able to speak like, you know, speak at the pace that the, the words so are coming. So diatomaceous earth is silica? Okay. Thank it has, you. A, has a lot of silica within it. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't make that connection. That's very interesting. 
Yes, a lot of silica, but, but the highest. So, you can get. so is silica, when you were talking earlier about silica, mm -hmm. were you talking about the earth nature, the, our and grounding being part of the earth itself? Randy, now you're starting to get it. <laughs> a little slow, a little slow. <laughs> but we're getting it. It is coming back to Earth, back to Sophia, back to whatever you want to call it. No. It is getting back to back to nature, back to Earth. Yeah. And as the Earth vibration changes, right now it's at about 430 hertz. It used to be at 27. They call it the Schumann resonance. It's so high right now. When the Earth changes, we change with it. Yeah. Now, if you're not grounded to the Earth, you're not going to adjust those changes. Now you're going to experience some trouble within your health. So, so very important to be grounded to the earth. Take in the earth. We're, we're part of the earth. We're not just living on it. We're part, we're part of it, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's very important. Energetically, physically, mentally, everything. Yeah. 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 All right. So, you feel, oh, Carolyn, you feeling good? I'm good. Thank you so much. You're, you're so good. very welcome. Well. All right. Well, this was a, a rocking uh, rock session. You got through everybody, and everybody seems to have... Uh, enjoyed that so what say you chris anything you want to add to what we've done here tonight or uh, absolutely now now of course the work that i'm doing here is something that uh, that i developed myself through through taking different courses that i found and made my own out of it i, I put my own thoughts my, my own beliefs my own findings within it and it's always developing every day i do sell this on my website chriskaler.net if, if you are somebody who can who can use a pendulum with charts and get answers I do have free charts on my website. There's five free ones you can download for free. You can print them off and use a pendulum and see if it'll work for you. If you're interested in doing this work and helping people, it, it certainly is something that everyone can use. I've got 50 different students in, in many different countries, literally different countries all over the world who are doing this and, and actually getting results. So it is something that, that can, you, you can buy it. You can learn how to do it. I'm going to teach you how to do it. The community, the 50 people in the community are there for you to help. So it's, it's something that you can be a part of a community, learn off of other people, learn off of me, ask me questions. I'll give you answers. That I'm, I'm, that's what I'm here for. And you can learn how to do this work yourself. Awesome. Can you tell people where they can find you, Chris? ChrisKaler.net. He has all sorts of cool uh, tools and things like that there as well. He's got some Shungite and some cool healing tools and some Organite and different things like that. So go check out his store too, and you can make your appointments there with him as well. Randy, do you have anything to say before we go? I have nothing to add to this. This was an awesome session. Um, thank you all for coming on yeah. tonight, for being open, transparent. And uh, thank all of you who are watching. Don't forget, you can find Chris Kaler at his website, chriskaler.net. That's that little link down there at the bottom of the frame right now. And uh, the link is in the notes. That's going to wrap it up for this time. This is Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. We're closing out the year fast here. Take care of yourselves. Stay shielded. The truth is out there. It's inside you. See now. you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. So, all right. This is Off Planet Radio.